How's it going there, Billy? How many do you have? I was going to say you have some really pretty yeah, ones over here. here. We don't normally associate bright colors with heartbreak. Gabriella loves purple and pink and turquoise, and she didn't like it when people wore dark colors around her. But then again, Gabriella Miller, the girl who inspired this gathering, lives beyond her years, was hardly a normal 10 year old. She accomplished more in 11 months than most of us would accomplish in a lifetime. For days, volunteers worked round the clock at organizer Chris Kroll's home in Leesburg, Virginia. Thank you. You guys really made a lot of progress. They dropped walnuts into vases, then filled them with paper tissue flowers. We're using some of the smaller flowers to help actually anchor the flowers into the vase. These bouquets were created to serve as an enduring legacy to a remarkable life. Hi, my name is Gabrielle Miller. I'm 10 years old and I have brain cancer. Following her diagnosis last November, Gabriella Miller became the unofficial national spokesperson for childhood cancer awareness. We used to kid that we were going to have to get a booking agent for her. Um, she was so in demand. Um, everyone wanted to hear from her. She worked tirelessly despite arduous chemo and radiation treatments to raise money for childhood cancer research through her foundation, Smashing Walnuts. Her tumor was the size of a walnut, so to symbolically destroy the disease, she smashed away whenever she could with anyone who would join her. Her mission was to inspire people to act because only 4% of all federal cancer research funds go to pediatric forms of cancer. So start now before another tragedy strikes. Start this year, this month, this week, tomorrow. Start now. I want to say one more thing. For the last year, we chronicled the challenges and triumphs of this plucky fifth grader from Loudoun County who galvanized a movement of giving. She raised $250,000 for the Make-A-Wish Foundation, was named Loudoun County's Volunteer of the Year, co-authored a book, and even earned an honorary college degree. Now I have homework to do for that class, and I'm ready to do it. The things that she did and accomplished going through that period, yeah, she's a hero. Whether visiting an oncology unit or giving a motivational speech, she convinced anyone who would listen that more should be done so kids like her won't have to face this crushing possibility. My fear is that, you know, I'm going to die. In what would be her last sit-down interview, Gabriella did not hold back her frustrations last month with Truth 365, a documentary that gives a voice to children with cancer. Do, do whatever you want with this. But I just have to say it. Talk is we need actions. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that was Gabriella. <laughs> always direct. And always delightful. <laughs> Regardless of her fate, she left this world laughing. <laughs> the tumor she so bravely battled came back with unforgiving speed. She slipped away on October 26th, surrounded by family and close friends. Seven kids a day in the United States alone die from cancer. And I hate it more than anything that my child is one of those statistics that is not okay. And Mark and Ellen Miller want the world to see the horrifying and sobering reality of their experience. You know, let people see that. Let people see that it is not okay that your six-year-old son is carrying the casket of your 10-year-old daughter because that's what happens in childhood cancer. Is there a box that you guys are putting these in? When Gabriella's circle of social media friends from across the country heard she was nearing the end of her fight, a request went out for people to mail in and drop off colorful arrangements to brighten this family's darkest hour. Nearly 10,000 flowers arrived in only a few days. For the Millers, these radiant signs of support defined their daughter's spirit. She said she wanted to be an eagle so she could soar above the clouds. Yeah. And that's what she is now, soaring high above. At her memorial service, hundreds of those flower-filled vases lined the hallway leading to the gym that was, of course, packed with thousands of people. If I never do anything greater the rest of my life than to have been loved by that little girl, I will consider this life to have been a very, very successful one. Those flowers are now heading to hospitals, oncology offices, and research wings. So children diagnosed with cancer can see a sliver of hope where there might not be any. And maybe 
inspire a cure for a wretched disease that robs children of their dreams. You know, if I go, if I lose my battle, then you know, I'm, I'm going to want other people to carry on with the war. They're going to win this war. But, you know, I'll be with my friends and I'll be in a good place. And it won't be all that bad. And Gabriella continues to inspire. House Majority Leader Eric Cantor's office has announced the name of a bill allocating an additional $126 million for pediatric disease research has been renamed the Gabriella Miller Kids First Research Act in her honor. It's a start. We'll be right back. Today has some very sentimental reasons for me being here. Soon after the sun emerged over the Potomac, Elaine Johnson Bolden. Just think about positive things. A high school teacher from Tennessee. But we're happy today. Joined so many others in crossing over history's doorstep. I made the journey four years ago. I never in my wildest dream I thought I'd be coming back again this time. Hundreds of thousands walked past the gaze of our nation's icons to witness the inauguration of President Barack Obama. Good picture spot. Look to the left for a good view of the White House. You can see the limousines. So great to see the country unified for the first time in my 87 years. Look how the waterfall But Joshua Williams this is awesome, had to stop at one particular monument on his trip from Detroit to D.C. This to me is just breathtaking. Williams never imagined on the day the country honors civil rights pioneer Dr. Martin Luther King with a federal holiday that he gets to celebrate the re-election of our first black president. And just look at the beautiful waters and the statues and Abraham Lincoln, what we fought for. History was made. Obama, Obama. Where we came from, it feels so awesome. Back to back like the Chicago Bulls. Then shoulder to shoulder, they roared in unison along a packed National Mall. So as we gathered along the National Mall with an estimated five to 700,000 people, we couldn't help but meet many who came from afar with remarkable stories. Oh, yeah. Corey Harris drove 23 hours from Houston for his grandmother, Sarah Jones. Her dream was to vote for Barack Obama on her 100th birthday, which just happened to be election day. The following um, week, she had a heart attack and she died. But she was so at peace because this is all she wanted right here. This is, what, this is what she wanted. Some came to complete a promise, some to be inspired, others to simply appreciate. America's possibilities are limitless. How far we have come. The nation just comes together. All colors just come together just to experience and see history. It's history made today. Jay Korf, News Channel 8. The weather is, re is really beautiful. The sun ha was just coming up as we got to the airport. Soon after the sun crested the horizon at Manassas Regional Airport, the last planes arrived. But these airshow pilots with the Warrior flight team. Here, that's the pool jet. That's okay. the one you're in. Yeah. Who traveled here from across the country, like retired Lieutenant Colonel Art Nalls. Did you already secure the cap on the top there? Okay. Did not show up to show off their gleaming war machines from bygone eras. They're here for a selfless tribute to two fallen airmen who these military veterans never knew. We're bringing these heroes home. And I get to be a part of that. In the summer of 1969, U.S. Air Force Majors Jim Sizemore and Howard Andre were shot down in their A-26 Invader during a combat mission over Laos. Sizemore's son James was nine and a half years old at the time. Tragic, you know, the whole world came to a crashing end at that moment. A generation of grief turned one day into hope. The crash site in Laos was discovered and excavated in 2012. And the bodies of both men were identified in April of 2013. Monday afternoon at Arlington National Cemetery, Major Sizemore and Andre, missing in action for more than 40 years, were buried with full military honors. So families who grieved longer than their loved ones were alive could finally say goodbye.
The Air Force, though, citing budget cuts, declined months ago to perform a flyover at this rare dual burial for airmen killed in action. But when warrior flight team leader Pat Marsh pitched the idea to his civilian pilots, Basically, all of them said, hell yeah, I want in, I would be an honor. After securing permission to fly in D.C. airspace from numerous agencies, including the FAA and Homeland Security, this band of eight civilian pilots aboard vintage planes roared into action. The first plane to pass over Arlington National, a B-25 bomber. Moments later, two P-51 Mustangs flew astride an A-26 Invader, the same kind of plane that Sizemore and Andre crashed in. And lastly, four L-39s soared by with one peeling off in the missing man formation. At a reception after the service, <laughs> James Sizemore thanked the pilots who volunteered to tell the last chapter in his father's life. I feel overwhelmed, but I also feel so joyful and so, so glad, so proud that this day could happen. Buried together in wreckage for more than 40 years, Major Sizemore and Andre are now buried side by side. The skies opened up and, uh, you know, it's almost like those guys are up there watching us and, uh, you know, up there with God making this happen. Jay Corf, News Channel 8.